Welcome back to Actionable Intelligence. I'm Eric Greitens. Earlier, we spoke with the founder of the Voter Integrity Project, Matt Brainerd, about his testimony in front of Arizona lawmakers during yesterday's election-focused public hearing. Now, today, the Michigan Senate Oversight Committee also held a hearing about the 2020 election. And during the hearing, there were a number of examples of potential election fraud and irregularities, including from freelance IT workers, from poll walkers, poll watchers who highlighted issues that they witnessed during the vote tabulation process. Uh, take a listen here to how this Dominion software contractor described her experience working with the company. Welcome to the Senate Oversight Committee. Hi, you have three you. minutes. Thank you. My name is Melissa Carone. I am a resident of Wayne County. I have a background in IT and cybersecurity. I was contracted by PDS staffing to work with Dominion Voting Systems assisting with IT at the TCF Center. What I witnessed um, at the TCF Center was complete fraud. The whole 27 hours I was there, um, there was um, batches of ballots being ran through the tabulating machines numerous times, um, being counted eight to ten times. Also, the uh, adjudication process, I witnessed numerous people walking up claiming they were both Democrats, saying they were going, they were sitting together, judging ballots all night together, all day together. I witnessed it all. I was on the main stage with all of the city officials. Daniel Baxter was in on the whole thing, and I am under the impression 100% that um, at least 90% of those workers were all in on this. There was not a single ballot the whole night, the whole 27 hours I was there that I saw that was for Donald Trump, not one, not a single ballot. That is, that is scary. There was something going on at that um, Department of Elections, and it's clearly um, something that's very um, illegal that occurred there. Now, that was just one example of the testimony that came in today, and another example of anomalies and irregularities that have already been reported and documented in places like Pennsylvania and Georgia. It's something that data expert Justin Hart has been following closely. Uh, he joins us now. Justin, thank you so much uh, for joining us. First, let's just start with your reaction to this hearing in Michigan today, Justin. Well, this is some of the most damning testimony that I've heard to date from the hearings that we saw or the forums that we saw in Arizona and Pennsylvania uh, to the hearing today. Uh, I think there was some really distinct things there. What your you, you know your viewers have to understand is that we're we're looking over this voting pipeline, right? We mm -hmm. we kind of see it from one end or another, and there's just a bunch of smoke coming from different ends. One of the big smoke plumes that's coming up are what we might call election day shenanigans, right? There were things that were happening during the count that are really amiss and we really need to account for. And again, there's not a lot of transparency into any of these systems. So it's hard to account for what's happening with the logged votes. And can we, for example, identify these votes that she said were run through the scanner multiple times? Because that is completely unethical and they all know it. And I think there's serious ramifications if we don't investigate this further. Yeah, and Justin, explain for, for all of our viewers who, who have never been there uh, in an election counting center where people are actually counting ballots, how can something like this happen? And what does it really mean for somebody to take a group of ballots and run it through multiple times? Shouldn't that be caught as uh, as fraud, kind of just explain to our viewers kind of some of the mechanics of how something like that might happen as we had a, a witness testify today that it, that it did happen. Well, there's a spectrum of explanations. On one end is the more nefarious, this was fraudulent and someone purposely decided to run ballots through and have it run up the tally. There's probably what she described is ineptitude. Basically, when you have a set of ballots, you run them through the scanner and one of them jams. Now, mm -hmm. the purpose of that is if it jams, you're supposed to back out the votes and do it again, or at least take the votes that have already gone through and set those aside. Uh, but it's been what, what she was describing was that when the, the printer or the scanner would jam, 
that they would take the whole batch of boats and scan them through again. So if it was, I think she described number 25 in the in the rung was maybe bad and got caught because these are all folded papers, that they would run the first 24 again. And, and so it's just a, a real uh, ineptitude is one of the things that I think we're seeing in all these smoke plumes, both with the software itself and with, frankly, the people that were running these uh, aptitudes here. Yeah. Now, just you've been watching not only what's happened in Michigan today uh, during during this hearing, but you've also been watching what's been happening around the country. Sticking just with Michigan for the moment, what was the most significant things that you thought came out of the Michigan hearing today? Well, I think the, the Michigan hearings brought to bear a lot of that Election Day smoke plume, as I've discussed. Mm -hmm. What I've been looking at um, from my perspective is the other end of the pipeline. Right. where we're looking at the end results of the votes themselves, right? And, and what we're missing is the fire in between, and we're getting some of that today at the election hearing. But what we see is kind of what scientists do to discover black holes, right? Mm -hmm. They can't really see the black hole, but it bends everything around it in a very specific way. And, and that's what we see on the voter side of things, is that everything is bending in a very specific way, and mm. frankly, oddly towards uh, Vice President Biden's a tally of votes there. So it's very difficult to perceive this as anything but an anomaly. And we would love to track this all back. Uh, in Wisconsin, in Michigan, in Wisconsin, for example, in the middle of the night, there were 143,000 votes that went through just at 3 a.m. for Vice President Biden and a very, very, very small portion. Now, someone might attribute that to, let's say, mail-in votes around Milwaukee, but we have no way of knowing and tracing that back. Uh, the sort of what they call the chain of custody is broken so many times before it even reaches the dashboards that you and I see on mm -hmm. Newsmax or other news networks that are getting their feeds on election nights for all the colorful maps. So it's a difficult proposition to really unfold. Yeah, and just I actually I think that the black hole analogy is is a really good one, and it speaks to the frustration that a lot of our viewers have. I mean, a lot of people are saying, look, why don't we just do a recount? Why don't we just do a complete audit? Like, explain for, for our viewers some of the challenges as you look at the election data that comes out. You've referred to it as kind of the smoke signals that, that you see. Like, what do we need to do to actually get to the bottom? And is it possible to get to the bottom of what really happened in these elections? It might explain some of these irregularities or, or anomalies. I think it will, as we saw, for example, from the 2000 election. Mm -hmm. uh, eventually, those votes were from FOIA requests and otherwise brought up to bear for different uh, studies, people wanting to look at it. So eventually, we'll know the truth. The truth will out, Eric. Uh, I just think, unfortunately, it's going to be a very, very tight measure for them to out that truth very quickly here before all the votes are certified. More importantly, they have to have a lot of things go their way. It's not just Michigan. It's Pennsylvania, maybe something out west in Arizona and Nevada. We know there are, there are, as we say, a lot of smoke plumes from different factors here, both on the software, that is the process they use to actually tally the votes, then on the election day shenanigans is step number two. And then it goes through this big dark pipeline, comes out the other end. We have a listening ear right before it hits the dashboards on the New York Times. And that tells us something really weird is going on. Mm. Uh, and so, you know, Votes are, and, and elections are not happening in a vacuum. You have to see them as a trajectory from previous elections. Well, many people thought in 2016 that 80,000 votes would have turned the election towards, pres for, for, towards Clinton. At the same time, President Trump garnered 2 million more votes than Governor Romney in 2012. Mm. So when we look now in that trajectory there, we see some really odd anomalies. As we said, President Trump got 10 million more votes as an incumbent, right. and, and by all counts and measures, he should have won. But the facts are the facts, and we have to get to those. Hopefully, there'll be some jury, some judge that will be able to give him them some time to make their case or not. Yeah, and Justin, as you kind of step back, one of the things that we, we hear from our viewers every day is how frustrated they are because you know, a lot of them, some of them are Democrats, some of them are Republicans, we've got liberals, we've got conservatives, but everyone wants to be able to believe in the integrity of our elections. 
When you look at what's happening across the country and you look at these problems, not just in Michigan, but in Pennsylvania, in Arizona, just give us a little bit of a forward looking pers uh, perspective. If you could wave a magic wand, what are the things that we need to do to make sure that everyone can have confidence in our elections? Well, just like we have a standardization for different industries, whether it's agricultural or electronic, uh, we need to have a standardization for our election electioneering system. Mm. Um, we all went through, or some of us went through old enough to go through the 2000 nightmare there, right? Uh, mm. Hanging chads and big bags of votes in Broward County. Well, you'll notice Florida was the very first state done with all their votes. By the time it mm -hmm. hit eight o'clock, they were done. They had their results. They knew what it was because they weren't going to go through that pain. I hope this pain that we're putting these states through now makes them rethink everything about how they do elections and that there's some type of, you know, bar that's going to come down on these people. Uh, obviously, we got word that uh, Attorney General Barr is not going to uh, do it. So we need to lower a bar in a different way, if you catch my drift. You bet. And, and Justin, just in the, in the 15 seconds that we have left, what's the data that you're going to be looking for in the next couple of days as it, as it comes out? What, what are the next things that you and our, our viewers need to, be, need to be looking at? Well, the data will be coming straight out of the courts. What will they accept as affidavits? Uh, will they take, for example, algorithms and uh, the type of anomalies that we've discussed as evidence of wrongdoing, as evidence of something that's amiss. That's, those are the things I'll be looking at very closely on the news wires. Awesome. Well, Justin, thank you so much uh, for being with us. Thank you for the work that you're doing to dig into all of these irregularities and anomalies. We look forward to having you back uh, on Actionable Intelligence and, and joining us again. Folks, again, Anytime, that's just, Justin Hart. Uh, election data expert with his analysis. We will be back in just a few seconds with more about the 2020 election.